Welcome to the channel. I started off wanting to test the difference in latency between the Odin 2 Mini and the regular Odin 2, but I decided while I was working all this out to actually test about six different handhelds, including these two. And the reason for that is there's been some talk about, oh, does the Odin to the original have bad latency? Is the Odin 2 Mini better? And of course, how do we compare to other consoles? So what I figured we would do is do a little test with the uh, limited equipment that I have and see if we could figure out, does the Odin 2 have a latency problem? And if so, does the Odin 2 Mini have the same problem? So to do these tests, I needed a device that would record some video with high frames per second. So I found out the slow-mo mode on my iPhone. If I set it to 720p, I can get 240 frames per second. So what I did was essentially get download the game tester or gamepad tester app from the App Store. Same app on all the devices. So all these devices that I'm testing are Android devices today. And what I did was I filmed some slow-mo footage using my phone and I looked and loaded that up and counted frames to see how many frames it would take from the button being pressed all the way down. And I had it tilted so I could see how far the button was down how long it took for the button to register a response in Gamepad Tester. So that's how the tests are going to work. So I actually have the data for all the handhelds I've tested here at the video, but if you would prefer just to skip to the end, there's timestamps in the video so you can just see the results or you can see the actual tests as well. But let's get started. Up first, we have a something of an old device, an Amberdeck RG405M. Let's see how it did. So, the Amberdeck RG405, I took five of those button presses that I felt I could see a uh, clearly when the button was pressed down in the response. Did some frame counting here and you know if there's a little variation but not too that not too much in the uh, response time so I got an average of about 38 milliseconds response time. The first one was a little bit a little bit slower than the others, but this is probably just a random error in measurement. So about 38 millisecond response time. Up next is the Ambernic RG556. So the RG556, again, the times here are fairly consistent. There's a little variation here, but the average response time for the button press here for the RG556 was 47 milliseconds. Here is the Odin 2 Mini. The Odin 2 Mini was mostly consistent. I had a few that were a uh, little higher than the others, but averaged out to 45 milliseconds to respond to the button press. Here is the Odin 2 Pro, of course, one of the original Odin 2 models.
the Odin 2 Pro clocks in around in the 50s in terms of milliseconds and on average the response time was about 57 milliseconds. Here is the Razor Edge. The Razor Edge clocked in and it was performing fairly consistently. Had a, had a little, maybe it's an outlier here in the last one, but the Response time on average was 40 milliseconds. Here is another slightly older system. This is the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus had times in the upper 40s, fairly consistent results here, for an average response time of 48 milliseconds. So what can we conclude from this testing? So here I've arranged the various handhelds in kind of order of their response time. The old device, the Ambernic RG405M and the Razor Edge, top the list here, with the lowest response times across the board. I'm not really sure there's any significant difference between the 405M and the Edge because I only have a kind of limited resolution in this data, so I wouldn't take anything from the two millisecond difference here just because if you go back and look at the data, if you skipped here to this point, you can go back in the video and take a look at the actual data, and you can see the data is pretty similar. The Odin 2 Mini clocks in at 45 millisecond response time, which as you can see is in the range of most of these devices here. The RG556 was very, very slightly slower. Again, I wouldn't take too much from very small differences in this just due to the precision of measuring these things and the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus here. One thing to note is the Odin 2 Pro is a bit slower than all of them. It was the slowest device in terms of response time. So if you have noticed some, um, you know, a little bit of input latency for the Odin 2 Pro, I don't think you're seeing things. I don't think you're seeing a, a false feeling here. Although, you know, 50, 57 microseconds compared to the fastest of the devices, of course, it is going to be a little slower response. Now, whether this makes the Odin 2 Pro unplayable, well, that's probably going to depend on your personal preferences. But it was at the top end of the range. But we have answered at least one question here. Of course, this is not perfect data. You can see how I collected the data. I don't have you know, professional latency monitoring equipment like some of the PC channels do, but at least within the limitations of the data here, I think you can see that their Odin 2 Pro probably has more, you know, input lag, latency, whatever you want to call it, than these other devices. Again, whether that bothers you, well, it's going to depend on what kind of games you're playing, but you can certainly see that the Odin 2 Mini is faster. So if you are holding back on the decision to buy one of the Odin 2 handhelds because you're worried about you know, input lag, latency, and so forth, then I think the Odin 2 Mini will give you all the benefits of the regular Odin 2 minus that potential input lag. So we've at least answered that question. So I hope you enjoyed the latency testing here. And if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section of the video, and I'll try to get back to any questions you guys might have. The, uh, if you like the video, remember to like. If you want to see more handheld content, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next video.